Hello, everyone. So today we will talk about the oxidation of alkanes. And oxidation of alkanes is also known as the combustion of alkanes. But I will firstly generally uh, cover that uh, what is the oxidation of alkanes and what could be the products out of it. And there is another you know, topic that how we can balance the oxidation of uh, reactions of the alkanes and what are the uses of these oxidation reactions. So um, usually the alkene is a class of the organic compounds which don't have that uh, distinct functional group that um, they are all, all bonded to the state sigma bonds, very strong sigma bond. So there is no double, triple bonds. There is no functionality like the hydroxy one, like the carboxylic side. So they are um, comparatively quite unreactive towards most reagents. So they are non-polar compounds and um, only uh, bonded to the sigma bonds. But under certain conditions, they go through some of the reactions which include the reaction with the oxygen. That is the uh, term as oxidation and with the halogens one. But uh, obviously, the, these are the reactions in which we know the alkenes are basically the class of the organic compounds and the carbon is bonded with the maximum number of the hydrogen for each carbon. So it means if some other atom has to attach with that carbon, so that has to substitute that hydrogen. So they go through the reaction uh, with the halogens like the chlorine and bromine through the substitution reactions. And uh, they also uh, react with the oxygen and they burn and they convert into the carbon dioxide and the water. And that's why this is called the combustion reaction. So usually the alkenes, uh, which is the saturated hydrocarbons, they give these two kinds of reactions, oxidation in which the alkenes are reacting with the oxygen and they combust, they burn and they convert it into the carbon dioxide and water with the large amount of the heat uh, uh, release. And the second one is the halogenation. This is the alkyl halides or the haloalkanes which we will get when the alkane is reacting with any of the halogen, chlorine or bromine or iodine. So now um, when we are talking, because we are, uh, today we are specifically discussing the oxidation reaction of the alkanes, the reaction of uh, any of the alkenes with oxygen. So there is another term uh, which comes when we're talking about the oxidation is the heat of combustion. So alkenes can be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. And this is through the free radical mechanism, but we are not going into discussion of that one. So our today focus is the combustion and assuming that the alkene is uh, completely converted into the carbon dioxide and the water. And uh, that is the reason why the alkene, alkenes are used as the fuel on a larger scale. So the energy uh, released when an alkene is completely oxidized is called the heat of combustion. So let's say in this equation, you can see this amount of energy which has released in the kilojoule or in kilocalories. So this amount of energy release when the one mole of the alkane do convert our reaction in uh, the reaction of the oxygen converted into the carbon dioxide and the water is called the tender heat of combustion. And this is the heat of combustion, right? So heat of combustion is basically the energy of the product minus that of the reactants. And for the combustion of the methane, this is the minus 890. So right now, the, this numeral value is basically giving you the strength of the heat which is produced. And this minus sign is basically the indication that this heat has evolved. This is the exothermic reaction. This is not endothermic reaction. So now uh, I have uh, written the two alkenes in that equation. So one is a methane. This is reacting with oxygen and it is converting to the carbon dioxide and water with an amount of heat. Now, if this is a propane, this is again reacting with oxygen, converting into the carbon dioxide water and with the amount of 2,000, 220 kilojoules 
of heat or if we mention it in the kilocalories. So this is the 530.6 kilocalories per mole. So one mole of the propane when react with the oc five mole of oxygen, so that completely converted into the carbon dioxide and water with that amount of energy. Uh, methane is basically the major component of natural gas, which is our household gas supply we use as a fuel. And the propane is a major component of the LPG, which is also another fuel source we use um, for the multiple purposes. So now, um, what is the application and uh, of the calculation of the heat of combustion? So there is a link between the stability of the alkanes. So um, one important use of heat of combustion is to give us information about the relative stability of isomeric hydrocarbons. Because we have seen and we discussed in the alkanes, so you can um, watch my previous lectures on the alkanes, um, their uh, sources and alkanes um, uh, constitution isomers lectures, that um, they are the number of different uh, constitution isomers which have the same molecular formula, but they have the different branches and the connectivity. So um, that enable us, heat of combustion enable us that to find out that which is the more good alkane in terms of uh, the fuel and which is the more stable one. So this can be illustrated by the comparison uh, of the four constitutional isomers, which I am, I'll share in the next slide. So all four compounds undergo combustion resulting carbon dioxide and water because these are strictly the hydrocarbons, they are only based on the carbon and hydrogen. So when they combust, when they uh, react with the oxygen, so they convert into the, completely into the carbon dioxide, which is gas, and that can evaporate, uh, uh, that can release uh, as a gaseous form, and another one is liquid water. So uh, it is only based on the carbon and hydrogen and oxygen we are supplying. So the products are the carbon dioxide and the water. So we did see that octane has a largest, most negative heat of combustion. As branching increases, the uh, delta H degree decreases, becomes less negative. Of these four isomers, the isomer with four methyl branches has the lowest less negative heat of combustion, right? So uh, means uh, if a mo one mole of what is the concept of it, like if the one mole of some particular alkene do uh, uh, combust in the carbon dioxide and water with the very high amount of the negative uh, heat or the heat release. So this means that this is the uh, least uh, stable one. If it has uh, uh, the least negative, this is the most stable one. And if they are having the very high energy, so they are the less stable one. And if the branches are increases, so this is the direct link between the stability of the alkane. So we will compare the simple octane chain with its different isomeric forms and we will see that what are the different heat of combustion values and we can find out that which could be the most good or most stable alkane in terms of the heat of combustion. So now in the next slide, you just look at these four isomeric forms of um, each other. These are the constitution isomers uh, uh, of each other. So this is a straightly the octane and its heat of combustion is 5470 minus. And if there is a two methyl heptane, and this is the 5465. If we have the two two dimethyl hexane, this is the 5458. And if we have the two two three three tetramethyl butane, so then the heat, the negative energy is a 5451.8. So the negative means that this is the more this is the more negative value as compared to this one. So now the significance of oxidation of the alkane. The oxidation of alkane by oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water is by far their most economical important factor. Oxidation 
of saturated hydrocarbon is the basis for their use as an energy source for heat, natural gas, liquefied petroleum gas, and fuel gas, and power, gasoline, diesel fuel, and aviation fuel. So now there is a question for you. And what do you know about high octane fuel? And this is a discussion topic, and we can discuss uh, either uh, if you are not the um, class student, so you can comment, we can discuss on a YouTube, just um, um, under the uh, lecture video. And if you are the student, so we will open the discussion on the Moodle. So um, you should uh, have to look and search about this, that you have heard about the high octane fuel. So as a layman, you may understand that the high octane fuel is a more refined as compared to another one. But what is the technical or the chemical reason for this that the high octane is a more preferred? And what that octane value means is so octane rating. So haptane has the octane rating zero, and the 224 trimethyl pantane, which is an isomer of it, uh, this is the um, um, octane so this is the one two three four five six seven eight so this is an other constitution isomer of the octane and it has the octane rating 100 means there is the um maximum this is a one extreme and this is another same so uh, at this scale we measure the octane values in many of the petrol pumps you may have seen that this high its octane rating is 45, 50, 60. So on that basis, the fuels are um, categorized that which is uh, the prior priority, which has had the high quality, which is a low quality. So now next to the uh, last uh, slide, which is a task for you that we have discussed that how we can balance the oxidation equation for the alkenes. And you have to do that uh, uh, balancing of the equation. Just ignore the heat, but we do understand that the heat will be um, evolved and will be released and generated when an hydrocarbon or alkene burn and oxygen, and it can it will convert into carbon dioxide and water. So uh, we are assuming that the alkene is completely converting into the carbon dioxide and water, keeping the law of conservation in our mind, because the law of cons uh, conservation states that the new mass has gener can generate or destroy. So basically what happened when, uh, let's say, if you just burn an hydrocarbon, um, so as a product, you are not able to see any tangible mass there. So it doesn't mean that the mass has totally destroyed. So basically, this has converted from one form and to another form. So propane has converted uh, by the reaction with the oxygen into the carbon dioxide and water. So water is evaporatable, and carbon dioxide is colorless, smellless, odorless. So we can't measure that because this is in gaseous space, and this will escape, and this will just um, spread. Uh, um, in a few seconds, it will spread all of that area where it, it has evolved. So um, you will assume that the propane and oxygen, cyclohexane, octane, and with oxygen and 2 methylpentane, they are reacting with oxygen and they are completely converting into the carbon dioxide and water. So I will uh, do one example, A part for you, so you can learn that how you have to attempt the right, uh, rest of the three, because sometimes the students are are uh, not uh, able to get that idea that from where they should start. So if your instructor, if your um, uh, teacher is asking this type of question, like they just are not sharing any of structure with you and they just name the compound or the alkene that this will burn or react with oxygen and this is converting completely into the carbon dioxide and water, so how you attempt, what is the best way to attempt so you can balance right to your equation. So the first thing is, <clears throat> um, another thing which I wanted to share with you, that whenever your instructor or your class teacher or your course instructor is this, uh, giving you such kind of 
problems. So they are basically checking your concept because in this simple example, I would be able to assess that either you get the right idea how to, uh, what is the molecular formula, how to draw the structure, uh, and to calculate the right molecular, um, uh, molecular formula, number of atoms and hydrogens, and um, how you can balance these equations, right? So firstly, if we just look at the propane, so propane, and obviously this is also giving me the idea that you get the idea of the IUPAC naming as well. So propane is basically the three-membered carbon chain, right? So this is the structural formula of propane. Uh, you can write even the molecular formula. So, but I prefer to write uh, the open structure to give you the more detailed idea so you are not confused with it. So this is a CH3, CH2, and CH3. So you have corrected. So this is a CH3, this is a propane, right? And this is reacting with the oxygen and the car. It is completely converting into the carbon dioxide and water and with the amount of heat which will be evolved. So the next thing will be to balance this. So the first thing is that we have to go for this, that you have to, so I'm just correcting this, I don't know how oh, it comes in the way, right? So this is the um, CH3, CH2, CH3, it's reacting with oxygen. So carbon dioxide, water, right? So just ignore heat at the moment right, because we know this will be evolved and this is the exothermic reaction and the heat is dissipating and it is releasing from the system, but we have to balance only the masses and the, um, the products we are getting here, right? So um, the first thing, the first uh, step will be that you firstly um, start with the minimum number of the numeral or digit, which we, you can use to balance the number of atoms from one side to another side, right? So the both side of the equation has to balance each of the atoms. So the first priority should be the carbon, why? Because this uh, is representing the carbon chain and the reactant, and obviously uh, the oxygen, the water, and carbon dioxide, they are in a separate, uh, they are separate product, and the, these are easier to balance, but obviously this is in a continuous chain. So we have to firstly look at the carbon number. The rest of the things can just be balanced by um, putting the remaining um, suitable uh, digit and numeral value here for balancing that number of uh, atoms, right? So now this is a three carbon chain and here we were getting the carbon dioxide as a product. So the carbon containing molecules is only the carbon dioxide. So we have to balance the carbon number. So we will put, if we put the two, that doesn't make any sense because this is a carbon chain. So the minimum number we can put it here is the three, right? So we have added the three here. So now uh, the next step will be that you have to balance the hydrogen because hydrogen is directly coming from this alkene or hydrocarbon chain. So okay, the total number of hydrogen is eight, right? And uh, the hydrogen containing product on the right side of the equation is the water. So if there is atom which has a sum of the subscript, this is, this is giving its number. And when we put the numeral here, so this will be multiplied with that one to give the total number of that hydrogen right? So here they are the eight hydrogens and H2O is in that uh, ratio. So there's a two hydrogen for the one oxygen. So if we put the minimal number four here, so that two into four is the eight, right? So there is the total number of hydrogen eight. So we have balanced the carbon, we have balanced the hydrogen here. So now we just left with the oxygen, right? So uh, for the oxygen, we just see on the right side of the equation that what is the total number of oxygen is here. And then we can easily put the numeral 
on the front of the oxygen because this is a single entity here. So this will not disturb the number of hydrogen or, uh, or nor the carbon. So here, this is, uh, we have put the four uh, on the front of the water. So it means they are the four oxygen. Then this is a three into two. Three twos are six, right? So six and four, they are the 10 oxygen atoms. So for this, what you think I should put in front of the oxygen? Okay, so obviously not the three, because then three, two, six, not four. So if I put the five here, so five into two is a 10 oxygen. So right now, this equation is the fully or completely balanced equation. We have the three carbon on the left side of the equation. We have three carbon on the right side of the equation. We have eight hydrogen on the left side of the equation. We have eight hydrogen on the left side of, uh, on the right side of the equation. We have the 10 oxygen on the left side and we have the 10 oxygen on the right side. So in that way, uh, the first thing that is if you, if the name is given or the molecular formula or the condensed formula is given, you have to uh, uh, draw its structure or you can write this molecular formula. Uh, giving you the exact number of the carbon, hydrogen, and whatever um, is there, right? So uh, putting the oxygen is here, which uh, an oxygen is always in a molecular form, form. So this is the O2. And then you will start numbering, adding that number or numeral to balance that equation. So you will start from the carbon, then hydrogen, and then the oxygen. So um, what we conclude from this equation is that if we burn, the one mole of the propane. So there will be the five mole of oxygen, which will be used, and they will generate the three mole of the carbon dioxide and the four mole of hydrogen with the certain amount of heat. So that was your task, and you have to complete the rest of the B, C, and D part for it. So um, you can submit it on the Moodle. Thank you so much. Have a good day.